Hello, my name's Andrew and um, today I'm going to talk about the 2016 Joco Starcraft bot sitting behind me which is our basically our house on wheels and uh, we've lived in it for two years and I thought I would do a video on what's gone wrong in that time and what we've broken living in it living in it full time. Welcome to this video. I hope it will be useful to anyone intending to spend any amount of time in a caravan, Jayco like ours or any other brand. I go into detail in things like breakages, winterization, maintenance tips and caravan living hacks. This video is divided into chapters so you can skip ahead to something of particular interest. I hope there is something of use. If you like this video would you please consider giving it a thumbs up and maybe subscribing and uh, feel free to hit me up in the comments so this is the grey tank right at the back of the caravan it's a 170 litre grey tank we do a lot we do all that pretty much all our cooking in the caravan and the um, grey has to digest a lot of cooking oil and um, chicken fat and that's that, that sort of thing you can see um, it comes out of the tank out of the tank goes up in a big loop up into our um, bathroom vanity and then it's that's the end of the hose there that um, beside the red water line that's the end of the breather hose for the tank and what happens is um, this gets blocked up with different things like I said fat or whatever from cooking going down the, in the dishes going down the sink what happen is it'll stop the, the sinks and the the bathroom sink, the shower and the kitchen sink will stop draining properly. And what I've done is I've found I've got a wee air compressor that I use and I've um, for obviously pumping up tyres and things like that but I've blown a little bit of air up that um, up that pipe there and that clears the blockage in that and where it goes onto the tank there and uh, that's sort of been useful for, for clearing that out and it uh, makes the tank breathe again and you can your water drains properly. It's um, great having this big tank for your grey but it, um, it hangs quite low at the back of the caravan and I've um, scraped it a few times going through driveways and stuff so that's sort of the downside of it. So the next thing in the two years we've broken is this um, the toilet cassette cavity. We've had a couple of um, issues. And that's mud, by the way. <laughs> the other thing that I've got to do for the winter rising is just the is cleaning this cavity out, which is always a fun time. But um, I just wanted to talk about that. There's a couple of uh, issues with the mechanism up the top there, and um, one is fixing, getting fixing a little cog for the alignment of the the blade that opens the, the attachment that just attaches to that, and it opens and closes the cassette. And another was the plate mechanism that sits up the top there. And I've made two videos about those problems that we've had, and I'll link I'll put link those in the description. This is sort of like a, this is the fresh water line for the toilet in the bathroom and um, it just goes from the water tank and it's just a fresh water line to flush your toilet out when you flush but what has happened is um, the that's the original hose that comes out of the floor up there and that that color hose which is just like a garden hose to me to me anyway and it came down and it joins onto this connection here and what was happening is it was leaking the Dan and Dave kind of fix so I've just got a piece of uh, fresh water fresh water hose so I've cut this is a Hanson called apparently it's a Hanson uh, fitting that you get I just got it from Mitre 10 which is a hardware store in New Zealand for those of if anyone from overseas is watching but um, it's just a sort of a, a plastic uh, clamp that, that just 
you just screw push the end of the rubber hose on on that end and screw it down and then um, do the same on the other end so it's not intended as a permanent um, fix but it's just something until we go in for us take the caravan in for a service again so one thing about um, being parked up for the winter time is it's good to be on power fresh water going in all the time on that blue hose there and our grey grey waste tank that I've just shown you is uh, is connected to a sump under that red table there so the place in Christchurch where we camped the water pressure from the from the mains was very very strong and, and uh, we were busy setting up the caravan doing the stabilizers unhitching from the truck etc and my wife just uh, put the tap on and started filling this tank while we were still setting up and um, what happened was the pressure from the tap overpressurized the tank and it, it caused a big split I don't know if you can see there's a, a felt felt pen mark um, the lights not very good in here felt pen mark further along there and that's where they've drawn on the tank where it was split it was but it was split right at the top top e top edge where there's two joins and uh, anyway the, the water pressure split the tank and it was just water pouring out all underneath the caravan here because we had to get that um, repaired at Jayco who put the tank in for us had to get it, had to get it re plastic welded. It's probably not an issue for everybody that doesn't that doesn't have this sort of custom setup. But some places you can, you know, you have to watch your water pressure because uh, the water supply is a bit unpredictable. So they've fitted since that problem has happened. With they've fitted this um, overflow system, this big this plastic pipe that hangs down here. If the tank starts overfilling, it it lets the water out, and it's it's so that the tank doesn't. Um, over, overfill and overpressurize like it did and break again. So we shouldn't have that um, problem in the future. Talking about uh, winterization, another thing I've done for for being parked up here for the winter is uh, to cover the drawbar. I was going to do some outside stuff today, but old mate out there with the chainsaws sort of making it a bit awkward to hear the sound for the video. So. Um, so we'll do some inside portion of the video. I have to sort of think about what what's what's inside is um, broken and deteriorated for the for the two years that we've been full living full time in the caravan. Um, but there's been quite a few just little things really. One of the things I was talking about um, winterization, and it's sort of an ongoing everyday uh, thing that we have to have to do but uh, this is in the middle of the daytime now and the sun's shining and we've got some got the window open there it's letting air in but um, I think it's for most caravans not just Jayco's but um, in the winter time when it gets cold outside you get a lot of condensation <coughs> in the back of these um, in the back of your closets and cupboards you'll see like the back of that that white piece behind the hat there that's just basic plastic like I don't know how thick it is but it's just sort of you know your fiberglass and there's no real insulation there so what happens when it you know drops down into the well into the single digits outside overnight is um, <clears throat> a lot of condensation forms in the back of these cupboards the one thing the um, the condensation can sort of cause is a bit of that pitting there that you can see this is inside the closet my closet and um, yeah, there's a little bit of pitting is formed on the on the material that the wall is made from. It's just a sort of a, a vinyl kind of material they put on the on the inside. And one of the methods that we use to sort of mitigate the dampness that we get in our closets is to use this damp bread. Um, I think you can buy it from the supermarket or your hardware store, obviously. And um, it's got this crystalline stuff that. Um, attracts the or soaks up I should say the soaks up moisture and this has been we've probably had this in here in my closet for a couple of weeks and you can see 
there's probably at least a cup's worth of water in there from, for a couple of weeks, so two or three weeks anyway. So we've probably got about four of, four of those, four or five of those strewn around the caravan um, in our closets, under the sink, in the kitchen, and in the, under the, in the bathroom vanity. The other thing that we use um, for damp control is this dehumidifier um, down here. This is the back of it. It's just the one that we chose to buy simply because it's small and good for storage in a caravan and um, and also it's a 12 volt um, appliance. Um, it's a Sheffield I think. Uh, we've got some 12 volt sockets up there. Um, if we're off grid we can use it if we want to but um, it is reasonably thirsty for for your 12 volt battery supply so it's something that we use quite a bit in the winter time when we're parked up and we're on power anyway because you can see I've got the 240 volt lead on it at the moment it's something that we use along with the damp rid and um, just simply opening the windows when we can when it's dry enough outside to to manage the the moisture that you get in the caravan. Another thing that we've done, um, or I've done in the last couple of weeks since we've pulled in here for full time wintering is um, clean the windows, but um, I've um, put silicon on the, the rubber seal between the window perspex or whatever it's made from the window pane and and this this rubber seal that goes around the around the outside of the window and um, I think what happens with damp and cold in the, and especially in the winter time and it probably dries out in the sun as well is to if you put spray you spray the good old can of silicon on the on these rubber seals and it um, just helps maintain them I guess and and seal around the window properly so we've done that which is now you can see it's got stuck with the dog here stuck to it which is good it's great having having a dog that um, molts all the time if you didn't believe that we've lived in the caravan full time you only have to look at these cupboards <laughs> that are in here um, we're crammed with with stuff we're sort of because we're spending the winter here we're not so worried about weight so we're allowing kind of extra things to creep in but in the springtime when we when we travel again we'll probably have to go through and have a bit of a clean out hopefully nothing falls out of this cupboard when I open it but um, yeah, we've got a computer and a sort of a board to be lying in bed with working and um, a first aid kit etc torches it's one of the things when you live in a caravan and you um, and you have to go out at night to change gas bottles or something you always need a need these need a torch like this which quite hand, comes in handy and plenty of fruit it's not a must-have but um, it's uh, something that comes in sort of handy I think is that this is just a little cheap little clock with uh, and temperature gauge and it also come, displays the humidity, the 55% is the humidity inside the caravan. And we've just found that it's come in handy um, living in the caravan because when you're cooking um, and going back to the moisture that you get inside, it, um, I don't know if it's probably not that necessary, but it's just handy to measure your humidity and sort of, it's a bit of a reminder to open up um, these skylights and things when you're cooking to just let the humidity out so it means a lot of cleaning I've just cleaned these roof vents up there as well especially um, this one here which is directly above the oven it, um, it gets very dirty and mostly covered in sort of your grease smoke cooking cooking from the oven which is just down there so um, things that are broken have been and this is, seems to be a thing with Jayco um, caravans of this era is these cupboards that the 
they originally come out with plastic they only took probably when we first moved in it probably only took um the one up here probably only took it about sort of four or five months to break the plastic the old plastic one because it's obviously this cupboard is um our pantry and um it's the one it's probably the cupboard that gets the most use and the kids are always wrenching grabbing on this to you know get into the food <laughs> and um that was the first one to break so what you can do is i think the can there is a way to glue the old plastic cupboards but what we've found easiest is just to um contact jaco and and christchurch is the one we contacted and we just they just um sent out these metal ones metal handles and um, they don't seem to break so um, yeah that's a pretty easy fix and um, it's easy very easy to to replace you just um, the new one comes it comes supplied with screws and just undo that screw there and that screw there and then this the the, the, um, the latch comes off and you just screw in the, the new one and it's easy as probably not specific to caravans necessarily but um, the 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 burners on the oven um, after a while will if you if a pot boiling pot uh, you know it, will, it overflows and there's a bit of muck gets into these um, burners the they can be very hard to light and the flame when they are lit is quite un sometimes can be quite uneven it's just because they're full of muck from cooking and so periodically it's good to, to um, unscrew these black pieces off the top and use a small pin and just delicately um, push push the a pin into the bot the wee hole that's in the bottom of the, these burners and I've made a video which I'll link in the description about how we did how we fix them and this this is due to be done again actually because it's hard to light so the next thing that's broken in the kitchen that's of significant sort of things is um this tap we've had sort of issues with wear and bro things breaking with the tap the first thing was that the um with um with everyday use with moving the spout left and right if you're doing dishes and that you're moving this and what that does is it eventually um, loosens the screw there's a bolt underneath the um, underneath this bench that bolt that's on the bottom there that um, comes loose just with use with like I said with moving this and um, you have to get in there with a socket set and an extendable um, thing on your um, on your wrench to to get in there and tighten that uh, that nut back up that's on the bottom of this tap so we've had I've had to do that three or four times but um, what is what is is best is to pull this tap apart and there's a video I had to replace um, the cartridge that's inside here. I've done the one on this tap and also the one in the bathroom. Um, and they've got, I've, uh, I think I've got a video, I'll link it in the description of how I did that. How I pulled these taps apart and replaced the cartridge that's inside the, the tap. But um, while I did that, I um, there's, you can pull this piece off here that's it's underneath the cartridge and if you get a bit of um, plumber's plumber's grease or silicon um, sort of like a gel substance and you can run the um, silicon around the little o-rings that are inside this tap if you do that it frees this probably needs to be done again actually it would freeze this spout up for, for moving and that stops um, it seems to have stopped loosening this tap off away from the bench if you've now that I've since I've done this um, freeing up with the silicon here and here if the tap becomes very stiff to use like if you're opening and closing it to turn the water on and off and if it becomes stiff that's when you need to 
uh, replace the plastic cartridge inside these taps. This is something that hasn't actually gone wrong yet, but um, we've noticed just lately we've been turning this button on for the lights, and just every sort of every fifteenth time you press it, it doesn't always work. And um, what we think is happening is these these light switches apparently have got the, uh, they operate operate by Bluetooth, and um, and they Bluetooth to the signal. To a signal box that's up here in the in the cupboard but this box here with sphere written on it and um, I don't know if I can show you on the camera but these there's little lights on the front of that box that light up when I, I yeah you can see it there look when I press the light button there's a wee light appears there and that's it does that for all of the lights and the all of the light switches in the caravan um, the lights come on for whatever um, switch it is but it all apparently it all operates by Bluetooth and I think what apparently happens is the there's little little clock uh, little watch batteries inside these switches that must go flat with use and this is a switch that probably gets used quite a bit and I think this has gone flat so there's yeah there's a little screw underneath there that um, I guess you can unscrew that and take this cover off of, off of it and hopefully it's what I've le led to believe by other people is that if you you can take this cover off and then replace the little uh, small little battery that's um, you can buy from the supermarket the little little watch batteries or something or for your for your car remote um, you know for your central locking same sort of thing and this is probably the other area where we get a lot of wear because of obviously we this is sort of doubles as a lounge suite as well as a as a table and chairs for having dinner at yeah this uh, piece of wood that's got the fabric on on the top here this um because it what happens is the dogs and the kids and any and my wife and I as well when we we get on in and off the couch this gets leaned on and it gets sort of flexed enough and it's got very loose and um, I can even uh, hand it away the, because of the movement of this piece of wood the um, screw has just sort of eaten away at the piece of board that sits behind and I think it's I don't know if I can show you on this one it's the same with the center screw as well it's it's um, sort of eating away the making the hole bigger but what I've been doing is um, to fix that is sort of a temporary measure but I haven't wanted to glue anything just because I don't know how strong this backing board is going to be but I've just put um, toothpicks and match matches inside this hole and just sort of just Chop, chop them up into small pieces about the same length as the depth of this hole and stuffed as many in there as I can and then in and screwed it all up tight and that has sort of worked for the for the sort of it's probably been a year it's been sort of loose and that has worked enough and I've got to do it again because it's probably lasted six months like it's probably lasted six, six months like this where it's been sort of firm enough but then just with general use general wear living living around it it's just come loose again and um, I guess I'll do the same thing again I don't really want to glue it and make anything too permanent in, ca in case in the future we have to do something different to it but the other thing that happens with um, living in here all the time is these these cushions on the on the seat they end up getting pulled out they sort of pull out from the back and get sort of flattened out because they are the dogs and the kids sort of jumping on them and they just seem to move um, so that's also a bit of a pain so the way we've tried to do that if get around that is yeah you'll notice it's been like a day or so and already the cushions being pulled away from the, the back of the, the wooden part of the back of the seat and it sort of ends up being worse than that um, ends up like that sometimes and you have to sort of get off and 
fit it all back into place and it's sort of been a real problem actually for it to stay keep it in place because um, just with the way we use it with sitting on it all the time and, and sort of sitting on it sideways as a couch but we've put um, glued velcro onto the back of this and then um, the cushion already came with these velcro strips on it and that's how it stays in place usually but it doesn't the the glue doesn't stick stick enough to the cushions or to the yeah to the cushions so it's it sort of doesn't doesn't stay fixed forever so it always ends up that, that it just comes out again so we don't want to make a more permanent solution because you need access to these um to underneath these seats because this one has got this door on it it's, and um I'll show you Oops. So in here is the hot our hot water um, calafont heated by ele electricity and and gas when we're off grid, and also the water pump is, sits in here, and all these pipes are sort of related to the water system. Um, and also, incidentally, this this black um, pipe that comes up out of the floor and back down again. That's the um, the overflow hose that I showed you when I showed you the tank. I haven't learned a great deal at this stage of um, about the water pump, and I can't sort of disclose about how to do anything with that because I haven't we haven't had any problems with it so far after two years. So I think that's been pretty good. Uh, fridge handle on the top here, um, and it's just all it is is a little spring inside underneath here. I don't know if you can see it. Now oh, there is, this, yeah, that's a small little spring that breaks very frequently. It's not that's not that strong. And I have made another video on how we how I replaced replaced that. Um, but it's pretty simple. You only have to do. All I did was buy another one. Um, I think you can even buy them off Amazon or something. But you, all you have to do is um, undo the two screws on either side there, and this this handle comes off. And I just the, new, the one I bought, the handle that I, that I purchased, I just screwed the new one in and away you go, so it's pretty easy. But if you want, any, want to know any more about that, how you do it, it's um, I've made a separate video in the past on that. And um, the one since, and it's probably been, that was probably a year ago, and since I've done that video on re replacing the handle, this one's broken as well. So, so now we come to the bathroom, and um, like I say, we're keep the cupboards open to control the moisture but I've since since we've parked up I've uh, cleaned these cupboards out and just wiped down on the inside of them just to keep keep any sort of mildew at bay but um, the only real thing that's broken in here is the cartridge in this tap as well uh, and I've like I said I've got a video for that the only other thing that's that's sort of broken was the Jayco the standard Jayco um, shower uh, clamp. When I was, after a year, I think we had this. We I was having a shower and I the the old Jayco um, fitting had a sort of a twisting handle that you twisted to clamp the shower head on this uh, rail here, and it was fairly light plastic and it just um, and it just broke. So what we've done is. We've gone to Mitre 10 in New Zealand as a hardware store and bought this. It was about sort of 80 or 90 dollars for Mitre 10, and it's a, just a, your basic sort of shower uh, shower handle and um, stand, and you can it's basically bolted in or screw, sorry screwed into the existing holes that were in the wall um, in this plastic stuff. The, the plastic of the shower and uh, it's got the bottom is you can adjust it so that it, the, the pole slides through the bottom um, mount there so it doesn't matter how what the um, length of the existing holes were you could sort of adjust it to fit was that was why we bought it basically the only other thing as well is, is in, in here is um, this grill and fan gets quite mildewy over time, probably have to clean it twice a year, but, but this 
the screw um, unclips. I don't know if you can see, I'm pulling it away with my finger there, but it um, unclips from the roof so you can unclick it and then you can clean. So that's basically um, most of the things that I can think about that have um, that have broken in the caravan. We'll um, go back outside and um, I think there's a couple of things I've thought about that I've uh, missed. What are you doing, Abby? Hmm? Wanna go for a walk? Hey? Eh? Wanna go for a walk, dear? This isn't strictly part of the caravan, but I thought I would just film it anyway. It's a, it's a sort of a handy thing to have um, with life on the road. We use it to cart our um, our grey wastewater um, container to the to the dump station. It makes it a little bit easier than the wheels that are on that, and um, and also it's good for for washing baskets anything heavy that you need to move around because you're living in a camp you've got to do a bit of a walk to the um, to the to the laundry sometimes this is quite a handy thing with anybody with a Jayco um, you know journey Starcraft maybe a silver line I don't know if they might be a little bit different but um, someone that was selling these he was just he was wasn't having much luck selling making a business out of it so he just gave this this blanket to me but um, I thought this is quite a good idea for in the winter time anybody that spends the winter time in their in their Jayco caravan this um, blanket on the door makes it a little bit warmer and um, we've got it we've got it stuck in there with some velcro which isn't doing a great job at the moment but um, it's basically just a kind of a, a sleeping mat sort of rubber kind of thing it's not that th it's only about sort of a centimeter thick but um, basically it just it slots in the groove in your door in front of your mesh fly screen and um, it slots in flat and then you can close your outer door over the top of it and it um, it just probably makes it a couple of degrees warmer on a cold night just and the other thing that's broken on the outside is in the two years that we've lived is in it is the the door handle just with another thing with sort of wear and tear with use just sort of grabbing it all the kids come in and out of the door probably 50 times a day and they you know always wrenching on it and so the old one uh, the old one cracked somewhere up at the top here and broke so we had to uh, order a new one and uh, and fit it it in there as well and that's that's doable it's not the easiest thing in the world but um, the main thing is as long as you don't let this inner piece fall off so to take it off there's just a screw up the top a screw down the bottom and um, but the thing is don't hold this in place don't let it fall off if, if it isn't broken because it's a nightmare to get back on because it affects your um, it's connected to your little catches up the top and down the bottom to, to do with your just separating from your outer door. I haven't really got much to talk about as far as the, um, the running gear of the caravan, the wheels and tyres, brakes, suspension um, and your, your tow bar and, and etc. Um, it's all been fine. The only thing we've done is um, we've had this caravan serviced every year, and um, and they've when the as part of the service they've sort of adjusted or replaced the brake brake pads and uh, adjusted the wheel bearings and um, sort of greased you know oil and grease everything up to make it sure it all functions properly. But otherwise, you know we've put it through quite a bit of punishment traveling around, and it's nothing's ever broken. And as far as the um, the running gear goes it's only three new tires um, because we've done quite a few K's so we've had to in the two years that we've owned it we've had now we're getting to the back of the caravan now and um, this is another thing that we found for find useful living in it full-time is the um, 
this little um, boot here in the back is next to this large boot which is under the boys beds at the back of the caravan um, but this one here it is for basically for your TV so you can see inside there's a bracket for the TV and also um, your you know your satellite signal feed and you in the twelve in the um, 12 volt power outlet for the TV and also the bracket that the TV bolts to so what you can do is have have your TV outside maybe underneath your awning if the awning's out but um, I've never used it because we never bother watching TV outside um, if the day ever comes where I can sit sit down and watch a whole game of cricket outside drinking beer and eating Doritos then I might consider doing it but I'm I've never been able to get that get that ambitious. My wife would have, have something to say about it if I'm if I do that. I've only tried it once and it wasn't good. So <laughs> it's useful for the fact that we can store our uh, wireless um, broadband decoder in here, and it's somewhere that we were going to get another uh, 12 volt socket wired up inside the caravan. But we've never, we haven't needed to do that because um, someone else with the Jayco told me about it, and it's just a good little spot for the decoder, the modem, whatever you want to call it, to get to live in here, and it seems to still work fine uh, inside there. So that's that's somewhere that it doesn't have to live by the TV or up in the cupboard and somewhere inside. So that's quite a good spot for it. The other thing that you probably want to look after and um, lubricate and keep tidy is, your, is the awning. It's another thing that gets a fair bit of wear and tear and sort of get thrashed by the wind and ours is no exception. We've had a couple of um, loose bolts that we needed to tighten up um, just because of the wind sort of thrashing it I guess. Um, and I was going to wax on lyrical about how you can tie your awning down and Um, and sort of have it out quite permanently and I did that in this when I first started filming this video but there was a quite a fairly strong wind came along the next day and I had to bring it in in the middle of the night the night which the other the final thing for outside sort of maintenance that I was going to talk about is uh, keeping the outside looking quite nice and looking after the fiberglass that the caravan is made from and um, so what I've basically done since we've owned it is just used a bit of car wash armor oil to to, wipe, to wash it, wash dust and um, bird poo off it. So at least twice a year I've um, polished the fiberglass with a sort of fiberglass polish. So this is the stuff I've been using. Um, it's from Burns Co in, in New Zealand. It's a sort of a caravan and RV shop. But you know, this stuff. It was about this is 80 bucks worth that I paid for this, but um, it's stuff that you can just put on a cloth and just buff it, buff it on until it disappears and comes up all shiny, and so that's good because it means you only have to go around the whole caravan once, which is um, which is nice because doing it twice is a fairly labour-intensive um, exercise. So probably been sort of six months or so since I last polished it with this polished stuff and it's still looking I think it's still looking pretty good the, the polish is still still shining so um, I'm gonna do this do do another coat so no to keep it keep it keep it good but So I hope this um, video has been useful for somebody that um, you might not necessarily live full time in your caravan but it's if you've got a similar caravan to this you might find some things that I've um, talked about useful. I just thought it would be a useful video to do for being with us living in it for two ye over two years and um, it's a fairly stern test of uh, you know how well it's built and what it can put up with I guess because um, it's probably 10 or 15 years worth of holidays worth of living in it um, you know as far as wearing things out and 
and seeing how thing, how durable it is. So um, it's still a plus. It's still a um, a thumbs up from us. We 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 think the caravan's a good machine, and it's um it's been good to us. We've obviously broken some things in it, but um, nothing major and nothing too um imp no too too work too worrying or anything. So um, I've heard some stories about people with caravans that have had some real bad luck um, with their caravan for as far as manufacturing quality goes but we've um we've obviously struck a good year with 2016 in the jaco factory so we're, we're pretty happy with ours and um it's put up with a fair bit of punishment traveling around the countryside so that's good um if any and i'm not a i'm not an expert i've just what i know is what i've learned in the last two years since we've been traveling around and i'm um, sort of had to learn YouTube, do, doing a fair bit of YouTubing, learning how to do things, how to fix things. Um, hey? Bit time to go for a walk, is it? Hmm? What do you think? You should stop coughing like that. <laughs> hey? Time to go for a walk. Hey? Can you get excited? Hmm? What about you, Grumpy? Is it time to go for a walk? Hey, <laughs> what do you bet? What do you reckon, Riley? Should we go for a walk? Hey, hey, all right, all right. Just give me a minute.